3D embroidered flowers have been popular for quite a while. I first digitized them back in 1997. You don't really need a specially digitized design if you have another suitable embroidery design. In this video, I'll show you how to extract some elements from this applique design to create a corsage. Fully illustrated and printed instructions, plus the applique designs for making the corsage, are included in the December 2014 Echidna Pie Project, which can be downloaded from echidnaclub.com. We're working with designs from the holly and poinsettia block for the December birth month flower of the year. The collection includes applique, red work, and filled versions of the design. The full size design is about 8 by 8 inches or 200 by 200 millimeters and has been split into segments for smaller sewing fields. While we could use the full size block for this exercise, it's much easier to work with two of the segments that I've already separated. To make my corsage, I need to extract a single holly leaf plus the center flower from the poinsettia. I've sewn each of these elements multiple times to build my corsage. These two elements have a continuous satin stitch around their perimeters and that's all we need for a 3D piece. I'll show you two ways to extract the flower and let you figure out the leaf on your own. Open in brilliance and then open the center poinsettia design designated as single. So. In our folder we have single, small, medium, and full size. So the single ones are just the ones without the Z stitches. So I'll open the poinsettia applique and there it is. You can see that it's slightly larger than a 100 by 100 millimeter hoop but it doesn't really make any difference for this project. If I look in the objects bar, the objects pane, I can see that I have four elements in here. And what I want is this red flower and that's really all I need. So I can simply do that by deleting these elements. So I can click on them and just press the delete key. And there we have the simple version. But I think I want a little bit more. We should really do a little investigating before we start deleting elements. So let's undo. Gotta love that undo. So here's our flower again. And what we want to do is to see how this design sews. It's really important to understand how a design sews. Now, obviously, you could stitch it out of your machine and figure that out, but there's a simpler way, and that's with the stitch simulator. So the stitch simulator lets us do a virtual sew out on the screen. And you can see that here we have color one. And color one is an outline. And for our applique, this is going to stitch, the machine will stop, and this shows us where to place our pre-cut piece. Then we'll do a little zigzag tack down, then we do some satin stitching, then we're going to do another little outline and some details. So you can see that there's color number two. Color number three starts with a zigzag. That's because I'm using this outline, which is the outline for my second applique as well as travel stitches for these veins so it keeps me from having to do it twice. So I'm going to do a zigzag tack down there and satin stitch. Now notice that if I back up here just a bit you can see that I have a little gap here and that's because when we sew the second flower it's going to cover that up. If I had satin stitches there it would just be too bulky, especially right on that tip. So we want to have a little space there. That means that these outer petals aren't really suitable for a 3D applique because there's no satin stitching. There are ways that we could cover that up, maybe do it on our sewing machine afterwards with a satin stitch or edit them in. We're not going to worry about that for this lesson. What we want to do is extract this part. Now you can see that because there is this outline and it's the same color as these, if we, del if we eliminate blocks we're going to eliminate this outline. And sometimes I like to keep that outline when I'm doing 3D flowers because sometimes I like to just stitch this outline on my hooped fabric, take my hoop out of the machine, do a little painting or coloring around the edge, then I know where the edge of the flower is, stick the hoop back in the machine and do some satin stitching. So we might want to keep that part and I'll show you how to do that even in Essentials. Essentials is a customizing program. It doesn't really let us do stitch editing, but there's a trick that you can do to bypass that. So let's get out of here for a minute. So we'll go back to normal view. I'm not going to use the center 
of the, the flower because I'm going to use some hand stitched beads. I can get rid of that and now I want to just get rid of part of this color and to do that I'll go back into the stitch simulator and I'm going to speed up to just where the satin stitches start to end and we can get to that point real easily by clicking these arrows and I'll go back one and I want to break up my design there and the way to do that is to put in a color stop and I'll just pick a color doesn't matter what one at this point and now if you look over here on the objects pane you can see that I have my outline with little veins and it's been separated from that satin stitch so now let's do a little bit more work so we'll go back out and we'll delete that color change so now we have these vein things sticking out and we need to get rid of those. Well, we could do the same process. Go into the stitch editor. Well, let's hide this. Make it easier to see what we're doing. And we could kind of go up to that point and put in another stop. And then advance some more. back up a bit. You can see this gets a little tedious pretty fast here. And now I have that vein separated and I could delete it. But if we have Enthusiast, which is the stitch editor portion of Embrilliance, it's an add-on, then you can do this a little bit easier. So let's undo what we just did. And this time we'll go into the stitch editor, which is right next to the stitch simulator. And once I'm in here, you can see that we have all these little stitch points visible. And we have some new tools over here. And these tools will select stitches. So we can, uh, let's try this one first. So if we use the rectangular selection, you can see that we can just move around and select our stitches that way. And then hit delete. I can use, also use the freehand tool and select stitches this way. Now, if I accidentally select something I don't want to, I can just click outside here and it'll go away. But we can select stitches this way, press delete, and they're gone. We can also use the brush tool and just swipe over them and they're gone. So whatever tool you feel most comfortable with, you can also see I, that I didn't reselect the tool and it was selecting the stitches instead. You need to reselect your selection tool for each time you want to do something here. So we can quickly go around and you can see how this is much faster than going through the stitch simulator and selecting stitches. And if I just want to get rid of one I can just click on it and hit delete. And there we have it. This section was at the end of a color change. That's important to know because it means that if the digitizer was working properly, if, it's, if you're selecting stitches at the very beginning of a color change or the very end, then you'll have tie-offs in certain places. So here we have tie-offs we know at the end. I happen to know that when I was looking at this, there were some short stitches here at the beginning of this section. So it has tie-offs at the beginning. So I don't have to worry about adding any tie stitches or lock stitches or any of that sort of thing. Now, If we look at our design over here, we can see that we have two colors. You can leave it that way or you can make it the same color. And all I'd have to do is to be, just select on it and type in candy apple, whatever color number that was, I forget, candy apple see if it finds it this way. Yeah. And now I have the same color. Now this means that my machine won't stop. Even though it shows two color stops here, most machines won't stop if there are two colors in a row. So that's something you need to know. But we're done now and we could save this. Now what if you needed to add tie-off stitches? Well you go into the stitch editor, find the point where you want to add stitches, 
and let's see, let's zoom up a bit. And let's turn off 3D. I like to be able to see what I'm doing here. Now you can see that we have little arrows and the arrows show us what direction the stitches are going. So if we wanted to add tie-off stitches, let's say right there, I could click on my stitch, right click, I get this pop-up menu and I could do my tie stitches this way or I could just insert some manual stitches. We don't need to do that in this design and I'm not going to show you any more than that. Just play around. When you get new software, play around in it. Don't always sit down and go, oh, I have to make this project right now. Give yourself time to play around, see what it can do. Because when you're playing around, you're not worried about whether it's going to turn out right, turn out wrong. Just You can just see what it does. Now the great thing about repurposing designs in this way is that you can really maximize your design stash. You can create things that nobody else has. I mean, who would have thought that you could have made a corsage from this flat applique design? I mean, it looks like a quilt block. Why would you make a corsage out of it? Now one thing I do want to caution you about is that when you do edit designs, if there's somebody else's design, whoever originally digitized it or designed it is still the copyright owner. So even though you've changed it even significantly, it's still their design. Now one thing I like about in Brilliance is when you bring in designs, if I had multiple designs, they'd all be listed over here. So I know where my original design is. I could have designs from other digitizers in here. Once again, if there were three digitizers in here, three different ones, each one would really own a piece of this design. So you could sew it as long as their copyright allowed you to do that, but you wouldn't be able to redistribute the digital file. So I hope this gives you a new way to look at your design stash and have a little fun. Go for it. Now you can get all the instructions on how to extract the leaf design, sew and build the corsage from the December Echidna Pie project. And once again, you can download that from echidnaclub.com. Go have some fun.